Bell from My Wine School, where it is wine your way. And Happy New Year to everyone. I'm uh, glad to be back. We, we took a, a week off to um, just drink wine, I guess. But here, we're, here we are back. And I'd like everyone to say hello to my beautiful sister, Karen Bell. She's a co-host, a resident chef, and of course, fantastic sister. So, um, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I think we're gonna have some new people tonight because I, I hope so. I hope you guys are out there. I personally hung about 700 of these tags <laughs> in Sunday stores around Milwaukee, and I'm hoping some people are out there who saw them and decided to sign in. So um, I'm already seeing some new people coming in from um, uh, from San Francisco. I've got Emily, who's a part of our team. Um, she is working on uh, social media marketing for us, so we're building a nice team for my wine school. So hi, Emily, and I've got some new people. Wine me, I love the I love the names we got. Uh, and Kieran, do you have any advice for those new winos out there? Anyone else joining us? Yeah, definitely. I would say first and foremost, drink up and enjoy the wine. There you go. Uh, secondly, I'd say join in on the chat roll. It makes the whole wine cast more interesting, I think, for all. Yeah, so definitely. So get involved. And how do you get involved? Well, it's really simple to do it. If you're watching this live, you'll see off to the right, we have chat with MWS. All you have to do is type something in under audience at the bottom there. It'll take you to this screen. If you're new, just go ahead and choose sign up. And all you need to enter is five fields. This isn't even coming to my wine school. This is through the software we're using called Ustream. So don't worry, it's, it's safe stuff. Um, I've been using it for now three, four months. Um, go ahead and put your, your uh, fill in your fields and boom, you are gonna be a part of our conversation. Also, make sure you let us know if you have any problems. Uh, you know, we, we will get to the bottom of it and make sure that you can have fun and talk with us. So um, I'm so excited to see everyone here. I, I'm seeing some uh, fun stuff on the chat roll. And this is Winecast number 25. We have already done 24 Winecasts. And as you can see off to my right, you're gonna see a, an icon. And that, what that means is it's a, a Winecast designed for wine explorers. We have three levels, Wine Newbie, Wine Explorer, and then Wine Guru. For the next four or five months, we're gonna just have one a week, which is Wine Explorer. Tonight we have a bonus round for the Wine Explorer. But the reason why we're doing that is we need to build viewership. Uh, we can only do these uh, for free if we continue to get more and more people watching. So for the next four or five months, we're working on building that viewership, but we're gonna still roll out just as uh, good and fun wine casts every week. I promise you that. So if you like what you see tonight, Tell your friends. That's how you can you can uh, uh, vote for us to stay. Is tell your friends about what we're doing here, and tell them to grab a bottle and start drinking with us. So tonight we are going to be doing Washington Reds Part One. Like I said, this is a two-part series tonight. Washington just we have so much to talk about tonight when we talk about Washington Reds, and it's the the title uh, so cleverly uh, uh, thought of by Emily is pick a style, any style, and. The reason for that is there are so many different styles in Washington that you probably can find something that you really like. And I'm gonna keep talking about this, but I'm, a, I'm, I'm on a bit of a kick on Washington wines and the values coming out of Washington are fantastic. And we're gonna talk about that tonight and why the values are there as well. Well, to celebrate the new year, I decided to open two bottles in one wine cast. And, um, well, actually, I, I did it because I just couldn't decide. And, uh, Karen, I think you're, you're um, definitely familiar with this, this idea of trying to give someone the perfect lesson or the perfect dish. You, you, you've asked me, you know, do I put quince or apple with my pickled mustard seed? And, you know, and they were both amazing. And the same idea here is that I've got two wines that I was just like, oh, but I could tell them this with the cab and that with the Syrah. And you know, at the end of the day, I thought, I'm just going for both. And it turns out it's a better wine lesson. And apart from having even more wine, which is always a better lesson, there's actually some great reasons uh, for having two wines here tonight. So we'll talk about that as well. Nice. Yeah, so, um, oh, we went back to the, I've got a jumpy little uh, <laughs> uh, mouse pad today. So let's actually talk about um, these two different wines. What we've got is Ridgecrest Syrah and then Ridgecrest Cab Sauv. Now, Karen, Karen just told me before we went on, she said, what'd you say about the labels? Because we're going to show them the labels, okay? 
Okay, I've got the cab. Karen's got the Syrah. Okay, go ahead, Karen. What did you say I to me? I just said if I saw this in the store, I probably would never buy it because it <laughs> looks like a very generic, cheap brand, like the the cheapest that you would find at Whole Foods and just, I don't know. I don't, Okay. Yeah, I probably wouldn't based on the label and the name. Okay, and well, that that is a great point because what we're going to find is that, we're going to talk about that a little later, but there was probably very little marketing put into this and so then you get all the value and that is... That's why never judge a bottle by its label because sometimes the the most commercial looking ones are going to give you the best bang for your buck. So, um, but I like what you said because it's, I think it's what a lot of people will think about different uh, about these wines or wines that have not so sophisticated or um, uh, flashy uh, labels. So. So yeah, I went for both. You know, they're only 10 bucks. I mean, that is cheap in the world of wine. We'll see tonight how good they are. And the reason why I picked both of them is that Cab and Syrah are both really important. Cab is the most planted grape and Washington's making fantastic cabs and Syrah is an up and comer right now. Uh, Syrah, and, um, Syrah has, uh, it's a third planted grape, but it is just fantastic. And, and we're gonna see that tonight. Another thing I wanted to show with these two bottles is, is the shape of the bottle actually is going to help us understand a little bit uh, about the diversity that's happening in Washington. So in Washington, you have everything from Cab, Merlot, uh, Riesling, Chardonnay, um, Sauvignon Blanc, Syrah. With those six grapes, we've just covered five of France's major regions. We just covered uh, Bordeaux, Burgundy, the Rhone, the Loire, and Alsace. Okay, so in one state in the United States, we're covering what France is doing all over France, and that is due to the climate. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the climate and why we're getting such a diverse style. Now, if you could, Vanna, hold up the bottle for me. <clears throat> I wanna show you guys the actual bottle shapes, if you can get the whole bottle, Karen. There you go. Okay. Perfect. You can actually see two bottle shapes too. And this is a, a, a cool lesson if you've never um, dipped into this, is Karen's is actually what we call a burgundy style bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why it's called that is that uh, P the region Burgundy, where a lot of uh, Pinot Noir is made, will use those bottles to bottle their wine. Now, Syrah, which is what Karen has, is actually from the Rhone in France, which is just south of Burgundy, and they also use that shape bottle in the Rhone. Now, what I've got here is called a Bordeaux-style bottle. And in Bordeaux, the grapes that they use are, among others, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot. And so when you see a bottle with this shape, you can often guess that it's gonna have a Bordeaux grape. And sure enough, this has Cabernet Sauvignon, which is also grown in Bordeaux. So another lesson, you can tell a whole lot more about what your wine now by just looking at the bottle. So let's see here. Um, we are going to actually start with wine IQ number one. Oops, you guys, I have a, I have, you're gonna see. I have a. Um, you just saw what I what I think of the wine. I mean, I just like gave it all away. But um, I've got a little bit of a jumpy mouse today. I'm gonna have to have the mouse doctor come over and take a look at it. So. Um, but we don't know if that's the cab or the Syrah. Right. True. Thank you, Karen, helping me um, recover there a little. So um, the beauty of live television. You're gonna see it all here. So like I said, we're gonna be um, hopping into wine IQ number one. And what wine IQs are are wine interactive questions that are meant to get you involved and in talking with us. So uh, this first wine IQ says, which of the following is not one of Washington's most planted black grapes? So I just went over all the grapes that are planted in Washington where you're paying attention, right? Which one is not one of Washington's most planted grapes? Now take a look at that. And by the way, you know, uh, while you're doing that, I just want to let you guys know, definitely open these bottles and get started. And if, and if you couldn't find this wine, just go out and get a bottle or, or go to the, the, the kitchen and grab a bottle because you're going to learn something just by having a wine open. And if you cannot find the wines we've got in your store for some reason, email us. We'd be happy to send you a, a suitable replacement for the wines that won't be exactly the same, but they'll, they'll help uh, uh, deliver the lesson that we're, we're aiming to teach here. Now, um, let's get back to Wine IQ, Karen. Is, are um, people coming in with the right answer? What yeah, are we seeing? It's a resounding C. Round, resounding C. So I see Cindy and Wine Me, um, 
Emily, uh, Sue, uh, also Vinconomous. Um, I love it, guys. C, C, C. Uh, and that's true, yes. Although Zinfandel is very, very popular in a place like California, which is just a little further south, um, very, very little Zinfandel is actually planted in Washington. So we're looking at great cabs, Merlots, and Syrahs coming out of Washington. And by the way, we've got a cab and a Syrah today, but don't look over those Merlots. You know, don't, don't listen to everything that the, the movie Sideways told you. Merlot can be fantastic. And not only that, but it is fantastic from Washington. So if you're gonna venture into Merlot land after a hiatus after the Sideways movie, go to Washington to look for your Merlots because they've got some fantastic ones. Um, can I just interject? Yes. Justin was wondering why for the Zinfandels not planted there. Why? You know, it's interesting, Justin. Great question. So why is there no Zinfandel? Now, I haven't been able to find any literature. If anyone's got uh, any ideas on that, we'd love to hear it. It's the beauty of the community. But I'll tell you intuitively uh, what I think. Um, a, the, the weather and climate and soils would be fine for it. Um, it's a very dry climate, and uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, and lots and lots of sunshine. So I don't think ripening Zinfandel would be a problem in Washington. I think it just happens to be um, more of a uh, what's tradition, what's practice, and that tr um, other grapes like Syrah, Merlot, and Cabernet do fantastically uh, and really hasn't been a lot of exploration into Zin. So those are my... Um, my, my guess is, but I'd love to hear if anyone's got a, uh, an, a, 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 you can even hypothesize with us guys. We love, we love everyone thinking about it. So if you've got an idea, let us know. We'd love to hear. So, um, let's see here. So you guys are right. So his answer is C and, um, you know, I've been talking way too much tonight. It's time to start drinking, right? Enough of this talking. And let's see why I am so thrilled about these Washington State wines. So if you've got one, both, none, fine. We're gonna help you out here. So we're gonna start uh, looking at the color. And when we do wine tastings with uh, my wine school, we like to engage all the senses. And, and that's why it's important to engage uh, your eyes for appearance. Now, um, this actually will show us a couple things. There's actually quite a difference. In fact, Vanna, yeah. <laughs> um, would you mind here doing uh, the Syrah and the cab next to each other, um, right in front of the camera? We'll see if we can see um, a difference. Yeah, they, they both look red, huh, guys? So sorry. So I tried, I tried to show you. What I'm trying to show you is that the cab is a garnet um, and the, the Syrah is like a purple inky color. So they have different colors, um, which are reflecting the different styles of the wines. And, and we'll talk about that maybe at some other point. But what's, what they share is they both are very deep in color. Both of those wines we could not see through. And if we have deep color in your wines, what it's suggesting is that you have thick skins on your grapes. And let me tell you, if you have thick skins, you better hope you've got sunlight and sunshine because if you don't, those are not getting ripe. And thank God, baby, we got it in uh, Washington. Now, I know when you think about Washington, you probably do not think hot and dry, right? Because we all think about Seattle. And if you look on the map here, uh, my handy green arrow there shows us where Seattle is. It's on the left or west side of Washington. And that is cool and damp. But as we go east and move over to the other side of the Cascade Mountains, there is something called a rain shadow effect. The Cascade Mountains are high enough that it's going to impede any moisture and rain from crossing over to the other side of Washington. So the west, um, I'm sorry, the east side of Washington is extremely arid, extremely dry, and tons of sunlight. In fact, there is so much sunlight, there's actually more sunlight here than in California in the summertime. There are 17 hours of daylight hours in uh, the eastern part of Washington, um, and that is two hours more than uh, someplace like Napa, California. So it's amazing the sunlight that we can get here. Now, um, let's, let's actually, oh, you know what? I need to give a shout out though to WashingtonWine.org. They um, uh, provided the map. So if you want to get down and dirty with some more of these details, go to their website because they've got a lot of information about Washington wine. So let's actually see if we can smell that sunshine. I love to be able to see what we, we we're learning here in the actual glass. So we, we took a look at it. 
Now the next wine IQ is what do you smell? Now if this is your first time with us, I often tell people start simple. Really just keep it easy um, and as you get more comfortable uh, and as you want, you start to get more and more specific. So again, start simple and you can talk about fruit, earth, spice, or really anything. I mean, it's up to you. Whatever you smell, you smell. I'm not gonna tell you you don't smell it. Um, I might, and other people on the chat roll, might help suggest things, which will definitely help you, uh, help open those brain pathways for finding those different aromas. So let's see, these two are very different on the nose, very different. Uh, I'd love to hear if anyone's um, got any comments or if Karen, you've got a comment on what you're smelling here. Um, well, on the cab, I get quite a bit of cedar and mint, menthol so, a bit. Cedar and mint on the cab, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Syrah to me is a lot uh, more earthy. A lot more earthy, okay. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. Let's actually start with the Syrah. Now the Syrah, as anyone else, if anyone has a Syrah out there, raise your virtual hand and let us know. And the reason is because uh, I actually opened these last night um, and uh, you know just made sure they were okay for us, of course, that's, that's all I was doing. And the Syrah is what we call reductive. Um, the Syrah grape uh, is just inherently more prone to these reductive flavors and aromas. Now, what, is, what does that mean, reductive? You know, reductive is, I'm not gonna get into the science of it too much, but what it'll smell like is, a lot of people will describe it as earthy. Sulfur, though, matches, um, uh, you know, like a used match or real dirty. Um, anything, uh, um, if it's real extreme, like rotten eggs, this, this I didn't get on that. I got a little bit of the burnt match smell from it. And that's very common with Syrah. It's not a fault usually. Usually with just a little bit of oxygen, it's going to blow off. And what's happening is it, is it takes the oxygen in, it's, it's allowing those um, uh, undesirable aromas to blow off. So um, if, you, if at first you're like, oh, I don't know, you know, this is not my style. Keep swirling because it's gonna get a little better. In fact, I had on my notes, started with reductive notes, but then really I started to get these ripe, ripe blackberries and, and um, blueberries. I also got milk chocolate and a, and a purple flowers. I mean, really a pretty nose that showed good complexity. I even got a touch of cola and vanilla. So, I mean, really all over the map. Um, let's see here. And then let's talk about the Cabernet. Karen, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said, you said menthol. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, exactly. So menthol, green pepper. I got a lot of green pepper as well, which is very typical of Cabernet. Um, and what that's showing, oh, but in addition to that though, you got blackberries, right? And berries and fruit. So we got fruit, which is showing us that sun, but that menthol, mint, green pepper is showing us the cool climate. So it's a lot of sun, but cool climate, a very unusual um, uh, balance that we're finding in Washington. And so I love that. We're gonna talk more in the next Winecast about this, this balance of cool, but sunlight and, and what it does to the wine. But what I think it does to the wine is we're gonna find out on the palate. So I'm not gonna tell you too much, okay? So uh, go ahead and um, let's taste the wine. So Karen, I'm gonna put you on. We're gonna divide and conquer, okay? Because okay. we gotta make sure we're done in 10 minutes here. So you go ahead and taste the Syrah. I'm gonna taste the Cabernet. And then you guys taste it too. You guys let me know what uh, you taste on these wines and um, just tell us Cab and then your notes or Syrah and your notes. and Things you can think about are things like acid, body, tannin, and if any of those words are a little like, I'm not sure what she means by all that stuff, then go ahead and check out Winecast number, I forgot to write down the number. It's called um, Wine Tasting Level One. I'll find it and I'll put it on our, um, we always have a blog under MWS Decant that has all the questions that we couldn't get to answered. So I'll put it there. I'll put a link, actually I'll, I'll one up it and I'll put a link, a direct link there. So what it is, is it's an introduction to wine tasting, uh, the way we do it here. So, okay, um, let's see which one. That is my cap. Okay, cheers. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I, do you guys see how it's not exactly lined up? <laughs> like our arms were gone and you know, I'm not, I'm not a camera person. Okay, enough. We need to, we need to focus here. Okay, so, um, so what did you think about the Syrah, Karen? I think it's very nice on the palate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I get it's kind of a juicy fruit mm -hmm. to me. It's got a really nice for me level of acidity, like a medium plus acid that I think would go really nice with some food. 
Um, the tannins, not so, I mean, medium tannins. Okay. Um, Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So, well, I love what you said. Good acid for Syrah and juicy. Mm-hmm. That is what's going on in Washington. This is what I love. You get the, the fruit from all that sun, but then you get that acid from the cool climate and from the long growing season so that you have juicy. Juicy. I, when you think something's juicy, it's usually a lot of fruit and good acid is what's going on here. I agree. And um, again, the cab has this, this same, uh, it's, it's really a cool lesson if you can get this wine because it's got the, the, the fruit and then it's got some of that green pepper note too, which is from uh, the cool climate. So sun and cool climate, really great conditions for growing fantastic wines. Now what's interesting about these wines is that there isn't a lot to be known about these wines. There's very little info. We talked about this at the very beginning that there is, um, the labels seem very simple. If you go online, you will struggle to find information about this wine. I love seeing that because that means all $10 of that wine have been put into the wine and not into telling me about it. Um, and so these wines are really a great value. And this is why I'm loving Washington right now, is that the values coming out of uh, Washington, the reds and the whites, which we're gonna have a white in a couple weeks, are just fantastic. I really domestically think that there is no other place in America where you can find values right now, like this. $10, this wine is fantastic at $10. Um, and the good news about all of that is that Washington is the number two producer of wine in the U.S. So great values, great wines, and lots of it. The only problem has been, is, has been that there has been little competition on the shelves. If you go to your local store, up until recently, you would see one or two different brands, and that was it. So I'm gonna talk about that in the next wine cast. So I'm, there's my hook. I'm, I gotta get you guys coming back for more. I'm gonna talk about why we've only seen a couple brands up until recently, and what the effect of the new competition is doing to um, the market, and what, it, what it's doing for you. So um, the only thing that I did find out about this wine is that it is from uh, Walla Walla, which here's our map of Washington, and it is um, southern Washington, and Walla Walla uh, is one of the warmest regions within Washington. Walla Walla is what we call an AVA, which is a, uh, they call it delimited, or a set boundaries of, um, uh, of the region. So. Um, this is coming from Walla Walla, although the label does say Columbia Valley, which is the greater area. So if you see all of that uh, lighter area around that arrow, that's all Columbia Valley. And um, I would say that would be the only criticism I have of this wine, uh, I, I, and, um, is that the alcohol is a little higher. And so what does that have to do with Walla Walla? Well, Walla Walla, like I said, is one of the warmer areas. And as a result, you are going to probably have more sugar from all that warmth, which will turn into alcohol. And so these are great wines for the price. The only thing that's just a little notable, I'd say, is the alcohol level. Just a little high, a little bit of burn. But hey, you know, a piece of cheese and um, it's gone. So, um, you know, the, you can spend 20 bucks a pound on your cheese when you have this wine because you just save 10, you know, 10 bucks on this wine. Um, so we're going to have to sign off and, um, sign back on, uh, for the next round. Wait, that went quick. Um, maybe I'm just the only one having fun over here. Is there anything I should <laughs> hit up on? Uh, anyone have any comments you want to share, Karen? Um, well, Douglas was asking, could that be because of a hot vintage? Yes, definitely. There, there definitely is some vintage variation. Although I will say Washington, for the most part, the vintages have been very um, constant through the last decade. I'd say the 1990s, you had a bit of a spotty record. You had some, um, you had some great vintages and good vintages. Um, it wasn't until, I think back in the 80s, we had a couple poor vintages, but really, you're not gonna have a horrible vintages. Okay, and then we gotta get off. But the one thing that is a huge problem in Washington are freezes. Those happen about one every six years. And because we're so far north and it does have an extreme continental climate, you do have uh, the, the um, problem of extreme freezes, which will kill uh, usually younger vines. So that's, that might uh, reduce um, 
yield. So Douglas, I think maybe more of the problem in Washington is a variation in production. I actually have those numbers. I'll take a look in between and see um, 2008, what kind of difference we had. But um, there can be, there's definitely, I've heard winemakers talk about hotter and cooler vintages. Definitely, without a doubt in Washington. Um, but I, I think it's more of the walla walla um, coming through on the wine. But it's just my opinion, you know. We all have opinion, and that's the beauty of what we're doing here today, guys. So I think that, oh, I wanna know what you guys think, and then we're gonna sign off and sign back on. So you guys already know what I think, because I have a jumpy mouse tonight. But um, tell me what you think, and like I said, I'd for the cab, I'd stock it. Um, the, the cab is, for me, it has a little bit more elegance, um, a little bit more balance, a little bit more my style, too. And these ratings are meant to reflect your personal style, too. It's, it takes the quality into consideration, but also your, um, your, your personal preference. The Syrah is a little, uh, lots of alcohol, a little bit, um, uh, uh, just a, a bigger, broodier wine, which, hey, it's just not my style, but, but it's a great wine. Um, what are any, are, did anyone come in with any comments on the wine? No, I think a lot of people had a difficult time finding this specific wine, so they're kind of just talking about the wines that they have. Perfect. Yeah, yeah and grab a wine and just open it. Now, it's interesting, this wine is hard to find. Um, uh, this was available at Sendex, but this one, um, uh, you know, I think it's because it's a, a smaller uh, a, a distributor, and then, you know, depending on who picks it up, I, um, it was a tough wine to find. So in coming weeks, I promise, we're gonna have wines that are really, really easy to find. I uh, made sure of that. So we're gonna sign off and sign back on in about two minutes, so stick with us. All you have to do is press play again at the end, or um, when the screen comes back up, there'll be a play button, and you'll be set to go. Also, if you're signing off for good tonight, Come back and see us on Friday. We're going to do a special edition <laughs> Friday night tasting this week. At 7 o'clock, we're doing the Folk Machine Pinot Noir, and we're going to be talking about food and wine pairing. So maybe we'll get a little hungry, get some food out. Uh, I'm Jessica Bell from My Wine School, where it's wine your way, and we'll see you in just a couple minutes.